for now. So, as I said, Wednesday is a huge day for us all. The cuts will affect every man, woman and child in the United Kingdom. It's a huge day on Five Live. There'll be full coverage throughout the day and certainly on this programme as well into the evening. Um, but details are coming through now ahead um, uh, of Wednesday. And so that if you... When we look at council housing, social housing, here's what these these reforms may mean for people who live in them at, at the moment or, or are planning to live in them or trying to live in them. Um, p people will have to give up council houses if they can afford to buy privately. That's part of the new rules. There should, according to George Osborne, be no winning the jackpot feeling. Once you get uh, assigned a council house, you shouldn't assume that that is for life. Rents, which now are around a third of the market rate, could go up to 90%. There'll be less subsidies uh, from the taxpayer. Also, tenants could be reassessed every five to ten years. That will plainly to be seen if, you, if your circumstances have changed, if you've got a new job, if you're getting paid more money, if your children have left home. So the question is, oh, and also uh, uh, elderly people may have to downsize after their kids have, have left home. There have been instances of elderly residents keeping a, a three or four bedroomed house when plainly they may not need it. So what do you make of all this? 0500 909 693. Is it, is it a timely reform of the social housing system or is it targeting the poor? ahead of the cuts. Give us a call 0500 909 693. Joining us now is Jonathan Davis, an investment advisor. Hello, Jonathan. Hello again, Tony. Hi. And Dave Nellist is a Socialist Party councillor in Coventry. Hello, Dave. Good evening, Tony. Dave, uh, David Cameron says they're fair. What do you make of these changes? The exact opposite. Uh, they're certainly not uh, uh, fair. We, we've had for uh, a number of years building up... Um, a subterranean volcano uh, with now nearly 5 million people on housing waiting lists, and yet the rate at which we're building social housing is uh, is, is one of the lowest ever. In Coventry, where, where, where I'm a, a councillor, we now have 17,000 people on the waiting list, and the target is to build 400 houses a year. That would leave 40 years before mm. these cuts, uh, if they come about but, as, as suspected on Wednesday. But, uh, Dave, the, fact. the Labour government spent billions on social housing, and, that, and the waiting list, according to the current government, uh, has doubled, as you say, to 5 million people to 2 million families. So maybe the answer can't be just to approach it with traditional methods. Maybe time for, a, a, as they say, the most radical rethink since the Second World War is needed. After all, um, if, some, if, if somebody's awarded a council house and then five years later has got a better job and can afford to take a house privately, why shouldn't they be encouraged to do so? Because what we need are stable, secure communities, not treating housing um, as some sort of temporary uh, transit camp, which you're parked in whilst you're poor, and as soon as uh, you, you get to your nose above the water, you're shifted off, particularly in a recessionary period when unemployment could be around the corner for, for anybody. Uh, I'd like to see more affordable social housing where families can plan for the future, live with, uh, uh, in, in communities with, with stability, not, as I say, being uh, parked in, uh, in, in some sort of camp for a few years until a government decides okay. that they're well enough off to move elsewhere. OK, give us a call, 0500 909 693. Should council house tenants have the right to a house for life? Jonathan Davis, investment advisor, has been listening to that. What do you make of what Dave Nellis has had to say, Jonathan? The socialists um, are off their rocker as far as I'm concerned. They have bankrupted the economy... They allowed inflation in housing for 13 years. Thus, anyone who wanted to buy a house simply couldn't. They were in cahoots astoundingly with the big bankers. And when the bankers lost us £1,000 billion, the socialists just handed them the money. We're, by the, the, what the present government is doing is cutting left, right and centre because they ain't got any money left. They're spending currently £700 billion a year and their taxes are £550 billion. So this is, as I wrote about 10 months ago, after the election, the man and woman on the street will finally realise what um, the dire state of our economy is in after 13 years of the previous okay. government. Uh, all right, Dave Nellist. Well, I'll tell you what, Jonathan, I mean, I, I was going to be nice and polite and present, but if you think the last Labour government was run by socialists, you really ought to get out more. Uh, the trouble with the housing uh, being dealt with as a market in recent years is that even the target of just over or just under 150,000 affordable houses a year was never met. And the reason why 
uh, houses for purchase rocketed in, in price was the lack of housing for families, the lack of uh, supply forced up the, the price. That wasn't the socialist answer. The socialist answer would, would be a bit like Liverpool. If you want to talk about real socialists, Liverpool in the 1980s, who built thousands of houses for ordinary working class uh, uh, people, ones with gardens at the front and the back, stabil stable uh, uh, communities, that would be a socialist uh, uh, answer, not regretfully what we had from the last Labour government. Jonathan, ju just looking yeah. through the... the, the I mean, yeah. I, I'm talking about specifics these are these are what the bbc understands will happen but this yep. this issue of of, of rents uh, going up from a third of the market rate to 90 percent that's going to uh, leave absolutely. a lot of people in serious trouble yeah exactly there, there are people on benefit who are living in fabulous homes in beautiful parts of the country um i live in the southeast so i'm going to mention Chen Ch chelsea and islington in london for example multi-million pound properties and you know people will say well these are rare exceptions well actually there's lots of families living in those beautiful parts of the country um and uh, on, on another side of things um they... but hang on jonathan they can't help where they live if they live um, there well, and that, well, those are the properties available... The taxpayers paying for it. Uh, your man there basically wants everyone to pay more and more taxes. Well, that is the way, I can tell you, to not have any economic recovery. It isn't going to work. On re with regards to the specific proposals here, it ain't easy. Of course it isn't. It is not good. Of course it's not. It's going to be difficult for families... Um, hundreds of families, thousands of families. Well, I'm sorry, that is the result of the last 15 so, so, years. So, Jonathan, just let me be clear on this before I bring Dave Nellis back in. Yep. When David Cameron said we should all shoulder the burden, he meant that the poorest residents in this country should face a hike in rates and uh, uh, rent from a third of the market rate to 90%. Uh, and, and, and I come back to you and say that all the politicians, whether on the right or on the left, have got it wrong. They're all in cahoots with the bankers. And if we sorted out the banking situation, then I tell you, what would happen is this. House prices would collapse, which means that those who want to get into property could do right. so. OK, all right. Well, I don't want to get into the private market now. We're talking social well, it's housing. The same thing. It's the same thing. The, the reason why people have enjoyed council is because they can't get into private. All right. Just in one word or not, before I bring Dave Nice back in, you, you think it's, 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 uh, it's ideal or it's acceptable for, for the rates to go up from a third of the market rate to 90%? For, for, uh, for people who are earning good money okay. to not be paying a third of what the guy next door D is Dave paying. Dave Nellis, the, t the taxpayer has been subsidising social housing tenants too much. No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I think we do need a different uh, way of looking at these uh, problems. We, we, we've partly and badly nationalised the banks. I think we should complete the, uh, the job. And then rather than actually tax people more, I'll give Jonathan a real radical proposal. I think people in social housing, in council housing, should stop paying rent after 25 years, just like somebody in a mortgage stops paying a mortgage after 25 years. There might be some sort of service charge for local uh, uh, services and, and, and so on. But I'd, I'd like to see the same stability in the rented sector that people go into the uh, purchasing uh, sector to, uh, to get and, and have communities and families being able to plan for the, the future, not like these proposals talk about, which is every five I, years or so I, being I, tested. And then if you're found to be uh, uh, of, of a different uh, standing than when you we got in there. Hide out. What's that going to mean to kids in schools if their families are told they've got to leave an area that they've been building a future uh, in just because some Tory assesses that they're now slightly above the, uh, the margins you, you, of poverty? Do you think it's appropriate that I, as a taxpayer, I should buy someone a house? That's what you're saying. It, 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 there's no difference to Soviet communism. Jonathan, it, I think it's, it's appropriate that you should buy somebody a hospital bed. I think it's appropriate that you else. should buy somebody a school. So, yes, I think society should plan for the basics for all our communities. Housing, education, welfare, all those things should be publicly provided at Businesses rates that people will can afford. Country. Business would leave the country if we continued to go down a route like that. And it's I'd be happy to come to okay. your one way. OK, OK, guys, uh, just let's take some calls and I'll come back to you. Uh, Angela's on the line from Exeter. Hello, Angela. Hello. Hi, Angela, what's your point? Oh, well, I'm incensed. It's, it's exactly what we thought would happen. The, um, just a minute, tell me what way. Um, we, we knew that um, we, the vulnerable in this country, would have to pay for the politicians and the bankers' gravy train. And by vulnerable, I don't mean those on benefits. I mean those who earn slightly above the minimum wage and, the, and um, below a living wage. 
we've got no recourse. Mm. What, what, what about, I mean, David Cameron talks about fairness when he talks about these possible new rules for the social housing uh, uh, tenants. What, what about, what's wrong fundamentally, Angela, with a reassessment of tenants on the basis that their circumstances may have changed? If they haven't, then, then fair enough. But if they have, then surely they should perhaps be encouraged off the social housing list to make, to make way for some of the five million people on waiting lists. Well, let's start off with these um, politicians' second homes. Why don't we have flats in London which um, MPs can be tenants of while they're sitting MPs and then they move out to make room for their uh, successors? Let's start at the top and leave the, uh, those of us at the bottom alone for the time being. Angela, thank you for your call. Martin's on the line from Birmingham. Hello, Martin. Hello, Martin. Martin's gone. Uh, Dave Nellis, uh, Socialist Party Council in Coventry. I shall remind people. Again, going through the specifics uh, of, of, the, of these items in the social housing um, reformation, as, as, as the Conservative uh, Coalition, Lib Dem Coalition are calling it. What about this issue of people who've been in a council house for many years and their children have left home and it's, say, three or four bedrooms and there's only two of them? Do you think that should be reassessed? Look, since I left Parliament 18 years ago, so I have a lot of sympathy, by the way, with Angela's point about MPs and flats. It's something I used to campaign for in the 1980s when I was in uh, in London. Uh, but since I left there, I've spent most of the last 18 years as an advice worker. I've dealt with uh, families where they would very much wish, when there's only one or two left in the family, to move to some alternative accommodation if we had a good enough uh, stock. But equally so, I've dealt with cases where uh, perhaps a, 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 an adult uh, uh, son or daughter is, is looking after an, an elderly uh, relative, but because of the succession uh, uh, rules, they've been told to leave their uh, property because we don't have the same security of tenure that we had 20 or 30 uh, years ago. I, I'd be open to a discussion without the pressure of rent tripling and the building uh, halving for what type of housing we need where. But I will take no lessons from a cabinet where two-thirds of its members are millionaires, where many of them have got two, three or four houses, telling working-class families they cannot have the security of a decent, affordable home. What, one of the strands of these reforms says that people should be encouraged to give up council houses if they can afford to buy privately. Well, now, that, as I say is in the same line as saying that you should be paying for your health, paying for your hospital bed if somebody says you can afford it. You should be paying for your education if somebody says you can afford it. I come from a different school. I admit to being a proper old-fashioned socialist. But, but I actually Dave, think but Dave, that health, also... education, welfare and housing are things that society should provide but the basics for everyone. Be, there'll be people listening to you say that and say, well, uh, the country has provided social housing. Why not get these people out of it who can afford to buy privately to get people in further down the waiting list because it won't work like uh, that i mean and, and, and you heard jonathan say i mean he the people he wants to get rid of are the poor in chelsea in the rich parts of central london so his mates can have the big uh, houses and the uh, and the flats and so on. it would create what they call a donut where the, the poor would live on the outskirts of city and the city center areas would be given over to the to the rich i want to see mixed communities based on the security of affordable uh, home. And that is the opposite of what the government are proposing. All right. Back to you and Jonathan in just a second. Jeff and Peter are on the line. Jeff's in Bristol. Hello, Jeff. Hello. Uh, what's your point? Hello, Peter. Uh, OK, first of all, I'm running for a long time. I just really wanted to say that this is really cut with me. I, I just honestly believe it's morally wrong that we seem to be targeting those that can least afford it. Yes, you know, there's always an exception to the rule, but the majority of them, OK, can't, can't afford, you know, and, and we just seem to be targeting with all these cuts. We should balance it, basically, that when we cut something that's going to hit the less fortunate in society, that we hit the, the well-off in society as well. So everybody can see, yeah, so it's very transparent that everybody can see that everybody is, is actually taking it. Well, I guess David... I, 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 I just think it's morally unwell. Morally I guess unwell. David Cameron would say he has done that by taking child benefit off people off high income earners. Oh, that, 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 that is a joke. Well, that, is not, that, that is an absolute joke. Oh, what difference does child benefit make to someone who's on 50, 60, 70, up to 100k a year? Peter in it London... Makes, uh, it, it makes absolutely nothing. No Pe difference. Peter, what do you make of what Jeff's had to say? I think it's absolutely morally wrong that people could sponge off society. Let's everyone, everyone take a step back. People like myself, I've got no children, I pay full rate tax, 
I work six, seven days a week. I save my money so I can buy myself a little place to live. I save my pennies, save that little bit extra money, work extra hard so other people can sit at home on their backside, sponge off society, people that get a council house with three or four kids, the kids leave home, they should be taken away from that council house. It should be given to someone else that's more, more in need than they are. Absolute joke. Have we gone mad? We live in a society, oh, oh they feel so sorry for these people because they can't afford it. Well, why don't they go and work? Why don't they try a little bit harder? Okay. Why don't they do what I do and work six, seven days a week? And when I get that little bit of extra money, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I put it to one side and I try and make myself a better life. All right. How about Je- that? Jeff, what do you make of that? Right, oh, OK, oh, OK, well, that's fantastic. You're absolutely talking cheese to me. I understand fully, and I do appreciate there are people that are swinging the lead out there. The problem is, 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 is when you do a blanket thing like this, yes, it's wrong. I don't think people should sit at home. I don't think people should take it easy. I think everybody should go out and work and pull their the weight. Problem How, is- however, if... When you do this, you end up targeting all of the people. The other thing I'd like to say is, 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 okay, I don't pat anybody on the back for, for working the days. I work six days a week. I am just come, I'm just coming back from a meeting now. I'm an hour away from home. Basically, I work 80 to 90 hours a week. Yes, I've got a nice home. Yes, I've got a good family, but I work for it. But I don't ram it down people's throats. Not everybody has the same opportunities okay. in life. All right, Jeff. And I, I, I do think we just need to be a little bit more understanding and a bit less. No, we don't need to be more understanding. We need to be less understanding. If the problem is it's gone too far to the left, too easy to sit at home, too easy to let the state do everything for you. What you're doing is you're punishing people like myself because we decided to work harder than anyone else, because we decided to put our heads down, get on with our own lives, pay our taxes, fair play. We're top taxpayers. We've got to pay a bit more. No problem. But what you're doing is you're making it too easy. Okay. It's gone too far to the left. It's ridiculous. Peter and Jeff. This statement is absolutely ridiculous. If I may, Peter, can I just come back with Very quickly, Jeff. I must go on. Very quickly. Oh in favour of all the layabouts and what have you. All I'm saying is is, is we're sending a, 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 the fear of God through. Maybe that's what's needed, but we need to be careful that we do not get the people that we should try okay. and... Right. Guys, guys you've, had, you've, you've had a fair say. I must move on. That's Peter in London and Jeff in Bristol. Let's speak to Ollie in Whitley Bay. Hello, Ollie. Hello, Ollie. He's not there, he's gone. Uh, all right, back to Jonathan Davis and Dave Nellis then. Jonathan, there will be people tonight, and I've made this point to you already, I want to make it again, there will be people tonight hearing this news who live in social housing who are absolutely terrified now at the thought of their uh, rents going up from a third of the market rate to 90%. What do you say to those in, in the 30 seconds you've got available? Um, that there's going to be a lot of pain. Um, the government finances are dreadful. Um, the Most... Almost all of society is going to be very detrimentally affected by what's going to be happening over the next few years. And my final point is it isn't because they want to do it. It's because they've got no option. OK. And Dave Nellis of the coalition will obviously, as they already have done, uh, blame the previous Labour government. Uh, spending doubled under Labour on social housing, but the waiting list doubled as well. The real problem is that the banks ticked us out into a mess. We subsidised their recovery. They've made billions of pounds of profit again this year and they're proposing to pay £7 billion in bonuses to the, uh, the traders who got us into this uh, 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 mess. And on Wednesday, there's going to be cuts like we've never seen before. But I tell you what, in many towns and cities on Wednesday and Saturday, there'll be demonstrations and rallies. People are starting to get organised to fight back. And I'd say to all your listeners, including the Daily Mail uh, reader, but pe- especially good people like Jeff, who had those excellent points to, to make, yep. get involved in the battle this uh, this week. This is not okay. the last word. It's only the first word of this debate. All right, Dave Nellis, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Jonathan. Lots of Calls coming in on this subject. We will take more after 11. Loads of texts as well into Rachel. We'll get those as, as well. 0500 909 693. You're listening to Tony Livesey on Five Live. <laughs> 